Okay, so we want to describe the energy level of an electron. And to do that, we need to fully describe that energy level. We need to describe four uh, features or characteristics of it. And those are captured in our four quantum, uh, quantum numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and describe these to you and give you as best as I can an intuitive description for each. So the first quantum number that we have that's given, um, um, or we use the, the lowercase letter n to describe, is the principal quantum number. That's what it's called, principal quantum number. Okay, I'm just going to use qn so I don't have to keep writing quantum number over and over again. And what I'd like to do is describe for you as well some kind of an in intuitive description. And you got to be careful with these, but um, at least the ones that I'll give you are, are fairly safe. So the shape, so, uh, oh, correction, gee. <laughs> size, I'm going to start with the letter uh, S. Size is what the principal quantum number provides. So we've got, even in our, in our Bohr model, you know, we have the nucleus, and we have n equals 1, n equals 2, and you get a sense for the fact that as you increase the principal quantum number, you get further from the nucleus. <coughs> And then we have script L, and that is the angular, angular momentum quantum number. Okay, and that describes for us the shape. That's, this is actually, in fact, the shape. And for example, you know, is it a sphere? And there's my best attempt at drawing a sphere. I'm trying to shade this in here, get some shadows over there. I'm getting better. Uh, no? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Uh, or, um, you know, this is another one. And, and I'm not just drawing random shapes. I'm actually drawing shapes that are going to be relevant later on. Uh, I'm trying to make them to have some volume to them here, uh, vol uh, three, third dimension. So, again, this is meant to be kind of a dumbbell-shaped um, two-lobed um, uh, volume, okay, and that, that, that's another one of the important uh, orbitals that we have for electrons around a, uh, within a, an atom. And then there is we've got angular momentum, principal quantum number, the magnetic quantum number, M sub L, the script L, magnetic. And the magnetic quantum number um, can be thought of as describing the orientation in space, the spatial orientation. Okay, so without getting into you know, specific values and stuff yet, what I can do for you is I can say, let's just say that we establish a set of orthogonal axes, x, y, and Z. Well, you could imagine if I took this, um, this, well, we're going to call it an orbital, and, and I, I oriented it such that it was around the x axes coming in and out of the page. That could be one orientation, and another could be this one where it's along the the y-axis, that's another orientation. And another would be if we rotate it again 90 degrees, and it's now oriented up and down the positive and negative z-axis. That's the negative y there. So that is an example uh, where I'm referring to the spatial orientation. And we're going to get into connecting the various different values of the quantum numbers. Uh, so you'll see really what I what I mean by this, and we'll give some notation to it. Uh, and then the final quantum number, m sub s, is the spin quantum number. And this takes on values, or has values of, of plus or minus one half. And you can roughly think of it, I mean, Got to be a little careful with trying to visualize these things too much. But if you can, you know, imagine an electron spinning on an axis, 
either clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, that might be an intuitive way to think about it. Um, often you'll see them just drawn as plus or minus a little half arrow like that. And um, this means you can have two electrons spin up and spin down within one of these particular um, orbitals. So those are the quantum numbers. And we'll continue in another topic to look at some of the actual values of these. But for now, that's hopefully a useful introduction.